Hi, welcome back to Neural Splendor. Tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about a question that was asked by WAF. And he just overhauled his engine a little while ago. He had a uh, he has a 2006 ISX 450. So that engine, if it's a, a model year 2006, would be the last of the engines that had no after treatment on it. It does have an EGR cooler. It has a turbo that has an air solenoid on it. And his problem is that when he idles overnight, when he takes off in the morning, he's got white smoke, a lot of white smoke. And then from what, from the way, he's, uh, question, the, way the question was worded, it's, I'm assuming that the white smoke burns off and then all day long it runs nice and clean like it should. So I wanted to talk about the white smoke and he also said that his turbo was leaking oil. So on the subject of turbos leaking oil, Cummins actually released a uh, service parts topic, service bulletin they call it, TSB, Technical Service Bulletin, about a year and a half or two years ago now, where they said that uh, no longer will you be able to just carry a turbo in and exchange it because it's using oil. And the reason they did this is because m most, and by most I mean a very high percentage of all the turbos they got back under warranty for using oil, there was absolutely nothing wrong with the turbo. It wasn't the turbo at all. So there's a, a whole big document they have about what to check if you are using oil. And basically they say if it's the, if the oil's running out the exhaust side of the turbo, then you need to look at the intake side of the turbo, at, like at your restriction, see if you have a problem there with too much restriction. Or they say if you're, you've got oil going out into the charge air system, then you need to look at your exhaust to see if you've got too much back pressure in the exhaust or restriction there. So that's kind of the idea. And of course, you make sure your oil drains tube, tube is open. And uh, while we're talking about turbos using oil, let's assume that the turbocharger is using oil, but I don't think that WAF's problem is the turbo at all. I think it's something else. But when we talk about the turbo using oil, these are the things that will make a turbocharger push oil. Excessively high intake restriction or plugged in plugged air filters and what happens then is the the compressor is going to pull air because it's like a screw compressor that's really what it is uh, the turbocharger is a big screw compressor so it's going to pull air and it'll pull a vacuum and if it pulls a vacuum it pulls against the oil that's in the center housing now that oil splashes up against a steel seal that's like a piston ring but it can still if you're all day long, you got a high vacuum in that compressor housing trying to pull air through plugged air filters, it'll pull oil and pump it into the charge air cooler. So that's one thing that can cause a turbo to pump oil. If the exhaust plugs up, you can put crankcase pressure. The exhaust system has high restriction. When I say plugged up, I mean high restriction back pressure against the turbo. That pressure can get behind the exhaust impeller and get down into the center of the turbo and it tries to go down into the oil pan and now you've got crankcase pressure, excessive crankcase pressure. And then what happens is the oil that should drain down the oil drain tube in a turbo can't because that pressure's in there and that pressure will actually hold the oil up in the turbo, flood the bearing housing, and then the oil will run up it'll pool over the seals that seal the compressor uh, t and turbine shaft. When it does that, the oil will leak out because those seals are not made to seal uh, oil that is above them. They're made to seal splash. So if you have too much crankcase pressure because you've got bad valve guides or worn out piston rings, you definitely can, if the blow-by gets bad enough, push oil out the turbo. Now WAF's problem is he has oil coming out the turbo in the morning and not necessarily when he runs all day and he said he has a big white cloud when he takes off and that's because 
when you take off, you're putting 800 to 1,000 degrees, 1,100 degrees of temperature into that turbo now, and that oil is burning because it's getting hot enough to burn. It's being, it's being carried mixed with the uh, moving air, so it becomes a mist and then it burns. And once it burns out, then you're, you're running clear again. So I don't think his problem is blow by, and I've not seen the engine, I've not seen any videos of it, I have zero test results. Everything I'm basing my opinion on is from what he asked in his question. So I think he has uh, one of a, maybe three different possible problems. He, just, he said he just had it overhauled. Injector cam timing is pretty critical on these engines. So if your cam timing's a little slow, and when you use those wedges to time the engine, um, the standard wedge kit, they're not, they're not that exact. So you can be slow on timing. If you're slow on your timing, the engine will still run good and sound okay, but it gets what, what we kind of call cold-blooded in the sense that as soon as cylinder temperature drops down, because you're injecting the fuel later, the air is having a chance to get, it gets compressed, it gets hot, and then the piston goes over top that center and immediately it starts to cool down. So if that fuel at idle is injected into the air when it's, when it's kind of cooling instead of at its peak temperature, you don't get quite a good as a, as ignition. And when the engine idles overnight, you lose a lot of temperature in the liners and in the head. It all cools down. So when you think about running down the road under power, that combustion chamber is screaming hot. It's always around 1,000 degrees in there. Just because the head's 1,000 degrees, you have ignition temperature in there, the liner's 1,000 degrees, everything's hot. So you don't have that heat at night. It gets cold. It gets, it gets down to maybe two, 300 degrees. It's cold. So now the fuel, if the timing's slow, if your spray pattern's a little bit off, the fuel, even though the engine's firing, if you could see the exhaust, there's little tiny particles of fuel coming out. Almost like if you take a spray gun and, and mist water in the air, that's what it would look like in the exhaust stream. And those little particles collect all night long and you end up with a puddle of diesel fuel in your turbo. Now, what's inside the exhaust manifold? There's soot. So when that fuel mixes with soot and, un, and completely unburned fuel also turns black because it's, it starts to turn into carbonize and that's where carbon comes from. Carbon is unburned fuel. It's not completely burned. Well, if you back up one step in the burning process, you have these small particles that are partially darkened that come out. This mixes with the soot that's in there and it gets thick because it's it's sticky and it looks like motor oil. Now you can definitely tell fuel because if you rub it between your fingers, it's real sticky and it's, it smells different than oil does. So it's very possible that what he has going on is actually, we call it fuel slobber. So what can cause fuel slobber? Well, if the overhead is set incorrectly or loose, that'll cause it. If the cam timing is too slow, that'll cause it. Cummins actually came out with a dial indicator method. There's an extension tool you buy for the standard old timing tool they've used for years that goes down in the injector hole. And you put that uh, lobe, you, you um, put the timing tool down in the cylinder, and then you put the uh, attachment on and you put the dial indicator over on the injector rocker arm on the, uh, on the adjusting screw, and then you turn the engine to a certain position, and then you read your injector timing. And uh, we just did an engine in 871, and we had to time that to 538 thousandths on the dial. I don't know what the timing is for his for uh, WAF's engine. There is a timing spec for it. And if you took it to Cummins, the first thing they should do is put that tool on and check your injector cam timing. Cam timing, because if it's too slow, that will definitely cause your problem. Now running down the road, you won't have a problem, it'll run fine. But at night, when you idle and it's cold, it'll slobber. 
So here's a test that you can do. You can, uh, the next time you idle at night, bump your RPM up, use your PTO buttons or cruise buttons, bump it up to about 950 to 975. Don't go over 1000 RPM because that changes timing. If, if you idle all night at 975 and in the morning you don't have as big a problem as you had or no problem, you know the problem was fuel slobber. So then you know what you have to do to address that. You either have to get the timing checked or you have to, um, if you have an injector problem where they're not set right or there's a problem with the spray cups and they're not spraying very good, get that taken care of, okay? So that's one. Let's assume now that it's oil. If it's oil, where can it come from? Well, it can come from the rings. If you don't have a blow-by problem and you're not using oil, I kind of doubt that it's coming out of the cylinders. You've already had two turbos on it. I seriously doubt it has anything to do with the turbo. If you use your head over and the valve guides are worn bad, you could have oil coming down the valve guides at night. At night, you don't have any back pressure in the intake or the exhaust to um, help keep that oil up in the guides. During the day, you got a lot of pressure in the exhaust manifold when you're running. You've got pressure in the intake manifold and that pressure tends to push the oil back up the guides, assuming that your guides are bad. I'm not saying they are. I'm mentioning everything that it can be. If you don't think it's fuel, then um, when you're home, let the engine idle overnight, shut it off in the morning, pull the turbo off, pull the exhaust manifold off, take a flashlight and look in the cylinders. You'll see a track right out of the cylinder, right into the exhaust manifold. It'll go right into the turbo turbine housing and the oil will puddle in there until it runs down your exhaust pipe, if it's oil. If it's coming out of a cylinder, then you got to figure out what's going on there. Um, I don't get too worried about, oh, I'm going to have to pull the engine back apart. But if you got oil coming out of a cylinder, it's going to be coming from one of two places. An oil ring's not sealing, or you got bad valve guides on that cylinder. That's the only place that you get oil out of a cylinder. So I hope I helped you with this to give you some clues on what to do. And let me know how you make out. That's a good engine. The 450 should last you well over a million miles if they, if they put decent parts in it when they overhauled it. And just change your oil. We change our oil in our fleet at about 10,000 miles. If you do that, you shouldn't lose any camshafts. Use 15W40 oil. Don't, don't buy into the 5W20 to save fuel mileage. If you need fuel mileage out of that engine, keep it between 1250 and 1400 RPM when you're on, down the, on the road and stay in cruise. In cruise, the computer is, is the most fuel efficient that you can get if you keep it down that, that RPM. Uh, last thing I'll tell you is make sure your intake system's sealed up good. We actually take RTV uh, silicone caulk and we um, caulk all of the joints where our rubber meets the aluminum or the plastic on the uh, joints between the air filter can, clean air side, going right up to the turbo. And you'd be surprised how much of a difference that makes in a million miles and keeping dirt out. I personally think that can add almost 100,000 miles to your rings, keeping that extra dirt out, because that dirt will pull in around those seams over time. Okay, uh, you're welcome to comment on this, and I hope I helped you. And once you figure out what it is, please uh, let us know, because if you had the problem, somebody else will have it too. Thanks for joining me on Neural Splendor.